guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing this all new 2023 Hyundai Palisade XRT. And a big thanks to Stefano and the rest of the management and staff here at Brandon Hyundai in Tampa, Florida for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to our inventory below and if you're looking for a new car or SUV in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Stefano. And as most of you guys probably know by now, the Palisade has been Hyundai's three row SUV since 2020. That's when the first generation was released. The 2023 Palisade that you see here has received a pretty heavy facelift for the interior starting with dual 12.3 inch displays which replace the outgoing 8 inch and 10.25 inch display. LED headlamps for the exterior. It is a clean looking grille. Of course, this is the XRT trim level, which is all new too for 2023, basically replacing the SEL convenience package. However, this is completely different. This is more of a rugged off-road Hyundai Palisade. For 2023, the updates also include smart cruise control, thicker sound absorbing material, and improved shock absorbers. The upper trims now have available ventilated rear seats. Digital key two is now iPhone compatible, and we get dynamic voice recognition. This is a loaded, loaded vehicle, hydrophobic windows too. There's really nothing this SUV does not get. The Palisade is available in five different trim levels, starting with the SE, under $35,000 for the base price, $34,950. You can upgrade a couple thousand bucks to the SEL, which is probably the trim level that most people will be going with. That starts at a tick under 38,000 bucks, 37,950. The XRT that you see here sits right in the middle of the pack at 40,000 bucks. And uh, there are two trims above this, the Limited, which is basically a fully loaded, luxurious Palisade and the Calligraphy, which even improves upon the Limited. The XRT though, starting at 40,250 bucks, includes everything that you would get from an SEL, but you also get 20 inch black rims, a slightly different front and rear lower bumper skid plates, darker grille finish, raised roof rails, and a conventional sunroof in the interior. Black leather at seats, splash guards, and a tow hitch, all come equipped on the um, XRT trim level. The Palisade is rated to tow up to 5,000 pounds, and if you go for all wheel drive, there's now an all new tow mode for the all wheel drive Palisades. But as you mentioned, here we have the XRT trim level, which is all new for 2023, starting a tick over 40,000 bucks. What do you get for that money? Let's jump right in. So as you notice, your all new daytime running strips for the outer portion, headlamps, projector LEDs for the high and low beam. I'm liking that daytime runner area, that smoke material and all blacked out grill. No forward facing camera, unfortunately for the XRT. It just sits in the middle of the pack. You get the forward facing camera on the limited and the calligraphy. No front parking sensors either, but we do get the radar cruise control for the lower portion hopefully you can pick it up on camera i'm liking this front end very bold you can definitely notice the redesign reminds me a little bit of the new santa cruz but much much larger of a vehicle and again since we get the xrt we get the black 20 inch rims wrapped in hankook ventus s1 noble 2 tires these are all seasons dimensions are 245 50 r20s so pretty thick sidewall with the 50 series should really help with the ride quality and these blackout rims really help when it comes to the overall design. A little bit of plastic cladding surrounding the wheel well, a little bit of plastic cladding for the side skirt area, but I'm liking the way it looks. Check it out, it has an aggressive flare to it. Smart access for the driver and a front passenger. Some smoked aluminum trim for the window trim. It's not shiny chrome, blacked out B-pillar. You can get a good look at your raised roof rails, which come available on the XRT trim. Black uh, mirrors, LED turn signal on them, blind spot monitoring on the glass. Get a quick look at the window sticker. Of course, here's your 2023 Palisade XRT with front wheel drive base price $40,250. We only have about $400 in total options. $215 for the floor mats, $190 for the cargo cover. $1,300 destination totals us out a tick under $42,000. You guys can take a look at all the standard features, best warranty in the business, advanced safety features, pretty much loaded. We get forward collision avoidance assist, blind spot collision warning, rear cross traffic collision avoidance assist, lane following assist, driver attention warning, and an immobilizer. 3.8 liter V6 with idle stop and go, made it to an eight speed automatic transmission with paddle shifters. Exterior, you can see all the features, comfort and convenience, all that 22 MPGs, 19 city, 27 on the highway. Anyway, continue along. The gas cap is pushed open, not easy fill. You can throw 87 octane fuel in this 3.8 liter naturally aspirated V6. Same wheel and tire setup out rear, smaller brake caliper, LED taillights, turn signals and reverse lights. And I'm liking the way these LEDs look. It says full LED system on the light itself. XRT badge in the corner. Shout out Brandon Hyundai here in Brandon, Florida for making this review possible. Palisade badging, Hyundai right above it. I kind of wish the wiper was integrated better with the spoiler. Hyundai has been doing that with a few of their cars. Third brake light, 
is attached to the spoiler. You get two reverse lights for your bumper area, dual exhaust tips, just a single outlet, but dual tips for it. Next to it in the center, we have our trailer hitch covered by a piece of plastic. Again, this Palisades rated to tow up to 5,000 pounds. But speaking of the exhaust tips, let's fire up this 3.8 liter V6 and hear how she sounds. Right, guys that was the sound of the 3.8 liter naturally aspirated v6 sold by hyundai for the 2023 palisade it sounds pretty decent for what it is cranking out 291 horsepower 262 pound feet of torque made it to this eight speed automatic transmission and front wheel drive you can expect this 4200 pound suv to get to 60 in seven seconds car and driver tested it at i believe 7.2 which is very respectable, not the quickest, but more than quick enough for daily driving. The intake has a nice funnel to suck in some colder air. Shell, Helix, motor oil. I guess Hyundai puts a recommended motor oil on their intake cover. But anyway, that's about it, guys. The struts are appreciated. It makes it very easy to open and close the hood, especially with this black exterior paint color. Oh my God, I can't even describe to you how hot that just felt. But anyway, <laughs> take one last look at the front styling. Very aggressive. I'm liking those daytime running trips a lot. As far as the interior, this is a really impressive interior for a $40,000 um, SUV. I almost called it a sedan, but taking a step inside, again, smart access for the driver and the front passenger. Soft touch materials up top, this faux aluminum trim in the center. Soft touch for the center. Pretty soft for the armrest. not the softest. I kind of wish they gave us a little bit more padding, but it is a true contrast stitch. The windows, as you guys will see right over here, are a dual pane. Even for an XRT, I believe even the base model um, SE Palisade gets dual pane windows, four-way adjustable mirrors, power windows out rear, ton of storage. You could probably fit two foot lungs and a 24 ounce water bottle to wash it down. The sound system is just a base. It's not an upgraded sound system, but it still sounds pretty decent, even considering this pretty large cabin. The seats, not a true leather, just leatherette, but could have fooled me. Perforated, they have like slight quilts up top. They are heated, not cooled. There's available ventilated seats, of course, especially for the higher trims. It's just for this XRT. We only get heated seats. Still beautiful seats, perforated even for the bolster area. Contrast, white little stitching, fully adjustable lumbar recline, drop, lift, and slide. But taking a step inside, we can really check out this interior. So first thing we notice is the steering wheel. The Hyundai steering wheels have been fantastic for quite a while now. Very thick, very Genesis-like steering wheel. Great 10 and 2 bolstering notch. Solid 9 and 3. We get a 6 o'clock spoke and two spokes for when you're on your armrest on either your left arm or right arm you have a perfect spoke to grab onto the adjustments include voice commands am fm and sirius volume skip answer and hang up your phone calls and your favorites the horn area is rubberized the horn itself pretty aggressive sounding horn not the most aggressive people should definitely be getting out of your way on the right side this is just your infotainment dial for this little 4.2 inch display the whole thing is a 12.3 inch display active steering and lane keep assist radar cruise control with smart stop and go so pretty much a loaded loaded vehicle the stocks auto headlamps auto high beams high quality feeling for the click no rain sensing wipers. I kind of wish they had them here, but they are available, of course, for the higher trims. Aluminum paddle shifters, that's also appreciated for an XRT. I'm sure 99% of Palisade customers will not be using the paddle shifters, but it's still nice to have them being aluminum. To the left of the steering wheel, um, interior brightness, traction control, electronic parking brake, and you can open up your tailgate, fuse box, uh, hood latch release, get a good look at your pedals. We get a floor mounted accelerator pedal and a tilt and telescoping steering wheel. I like the aluminum trim surrounding the air vents, more of that faux aluminum for the dashboard area, soft touch for the dashboard, dual 12.3 inch screens. These, these are updated for 2023. Speaking of the first screen, we mentioned that it's adjustable with these buttons. So you press this button right here, drive info, since refueling, accumulated info, auto start, stop, and right back to where we started. Press one more time. We get a turn by turn and compass. It works as a turn by turn when the navigation is hooked up. We currently don't have it active, but when it is active, it will show you a turn by turn. When it's not active, you just look at your compass. Tire pressure, have to be driving to see, lane keep assist and lane departure warning settings, but that's about it. My personal favorites look at at all times would probably just be this uh, drive info and the trip information. We get a digital speedo on the left side, digital tack on the right. 
uh, temperature on the bottom, traffic sign recognition, fuel level to the left side, cooling temperature on the right. The display is not very adjustable. When you adjust the drive modes, you can adjust between the sport, normal, smart, and eco. And when you adjust it, it kind of changes colors. In sport, you get a red theme. In comfort, you get a blue. In eco, you get a green. In smart, you get blue. But um, we're gonna leave it in comfort and sport, start the review off in comfort, transition to sport, just see what the differences are. I kind of wish the display was a little bit more configurable, but it still looks very cool. Piano black, which connects the two screens together. Not the biggest deal because you probably won't be touching that area very frequently, so it will not get attacked by fingerprints. The touchscreen, again, 12.3 inches. So big upgrade compared to the previous year. The map is huge, very responsive. Typical Hyundai Kia touchscreen, great response. I think this is actually more responsive than the 10.25 inch outgoing screen. You can see everything that's available, valet mode, passenger talk, quiet mode, rear climate, HD radio, setup, phone projection, all that, radio, media, blue link, notifications, and your user manual. My personal favorite to look at at all times would just be the map. We get some soft touch materials beneath, aluminum outlining your air vents, and kind of reminds me of the new Civics, how the air vents go all the way throughout this cabin. Engine start stop also with aluminum, button on it it's actually plastic but it looks aluminum looks close enough pretty good resistance for the volume dial shortcuts if you don't want to go through the touchscreen dual zone automatic climate control fan controls gear selector i'm usually not the biggest fan of the button gear selectors i always prefer the actual hard selector but at the end of the day this is an automatic car once you put the car into drive you can just leave it alone and just worry about the gas and the brake pedal heated seats auto hold for the electronic parking brake drive mode select as we mentioned we have eco comfort sport and smart mode We'll start the review off in comfort, transition into sport. Auto start, stop, you can disable for the purpose of this review, we will. You can get a look at your parking camera when you're not driving. You get guidance lines and trajectory and a very high resolution backup camera. Press one more time, returns us right back to our map. You can also take a look at the backup camera by pressing the reverse button, of course. Locks your doors. You get rear parking sensors, no front parking sensors, but still pretty nice for a XRT trim level. You also get a trailer hitch view, so if you need to line up your hitch to a receiver, you just press this camera angle and it has a very good view for it. But for regular backing up situations, this is the perfect angle to use. Put it right back into park and it returns us right back to our map again. This entire center area is outlined with this faux aluminum trim, hard plastic for where your knee will often hit. We get a wireless charging pad, which is appreciated, USB port too. Two cup holders, you can push them to open them up, to put them away, you just put them away. And as you mentioned, you push, push, and they pop right out. This area, you can push this and close it so you can hide all your stuff away. The center console armrest is pretty soft, faux leatherette, but it's very comfortable to rest your arm on. You can fit a couple iPhones in this tray. Massive storage compartment. You're fitting at least two or three two liter bottles of soda, USB port, and an additional 12 volt. You put this cubby right back where we found it. The glove box, we can pop this latch, which is outlined in aluminum, nice high quality touch to it. Damped, not lined with felt, but massive. You're fitting 30 license plates, two pairs of shoes with no issues. Frameless rear view mirror, also new for 2023. Three garage home link settings on it and a conventional sunroof. Not a panoramic moonroof, but it's nice that the XRT gets a standard sunroof. So you can open it up. It's a pretty hot day today in Brandon, Florida. That's about as far as it opens. It's sunny and it says 96 on this Palisades thermometer. So we can close this sunroof up. We'll, we'll leave the shade open so when we hop out back and get a good look and see how much light's brought into the cabin. Interior lighting is LED. Nice. But that's about it for the features and front seat, guys. Let's hop out back, see how much space is offered back there, as well as the overall quality of the materials. So stepping out back, up top, soft touch materials, that faux aluminum trim continues, aluminum door handle, pretty soft for the armrest. I still kind of wish they added a little bit more padding. It's not auto one touch out rear, but it is auto one touch up front. Decent storage, two cup holders. You can fit a 16 and a 12 ounce right next to each other, an additional uh, 20 ounce water bottle can fit beneath speaker stepping inside the seats are perforated contrasted in white decent little bolstering not the most bolstering but for a back seats actually kind of impressive perforation for the lower portion these are slidable and reclinable rear seats so very comfortable i'm a little bit over six feet tall sitting behind my seat settings and i still have a ton of space easily six seven inches of legroom we get map pockets back here the seats slide back and forth so this is the farthest back setting Third zone climate control, that's appreciated. You can use automatic climate too. Um, 12 volt, additional 12 volt, no USB ports on the console, but we get two USB ports behind both the seats and an additional 
Uh, map pocket. We can turn this AC off because it's going to be very loud back here. Captain's chairs, if you haven't noticed by now, the armrests are pretty small, but they still do the job. Not bad. That's about it though for the back seat. Pretty decent light bar into the cabin thanks to the sunroof. Air vents blow directly into your face. I like that. Interior lighting is LED back here too. We can hop out into the third row real quick, see if I can fit comfortably back there. So we press this button, the seat slides forward, makes it pretty easy access. So hopping back here. The first thing I noticed actually, we got three seat belts. So you can fit three people in this third row and I wouldn't be surprised if you could because check this out, I got plenty of room for my legs, plenty of room for my feet. There isn't really that much room for the backseat passenger, but he can of course slide back here and he has plenty of room to do so because I got a good three, four inches for my knees. Headroom, I got at least two, three inches as well. Same thing in the front. Very spacious back seat for a midsize three row SUV. This is one of the most spacious in the segment. Definitely impressed. Additional air vents that blow directly into your face. The interior light is a little bit far back right over here. You can see it's also an LED, but that's about it guys. For the third row, you press this button one more time, press and hold and seat slides forward. We can hop out of here. Hopefully I don't smack my head against the roof. I did not. Nice. Put the seat back and let's take a step into this trunk and then take this Palisade XRT out for a drive. So underneath the S is the button. Trunk opens right up. And even with the third rows up, you have a decent amount of cargo space. We recently reviewed the Ford Expedition on this channel, which is of course a full size SUV. And with the third rows up, the non-max Expedition doesn't really have a whole lot more space than this. We have some secret storage underneath throw some secret stuff in there fix a flat kit jack tire iron and a tunnel cover cool 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 to drop the seats all you gotta do is pull this latch and drop them same thing with this seat nice and with the seats folded down you can see this is a massive massive cargo space this is definitely one of the more spacious mid-size three-row suvs i can see why it's been such a hit over the last few years for families but again what you see is basically what you get you fold those rear seats down i guess 50 50 because it's captain's chairs i'd expect you to fit about like an 85 90 inch tv with no problem super spacious suv you can close the tailgate up by pressing this button and as soon as it closes we'll take another step back get one last little walk around of this 2023 Palisade XRT. I like this package. This is a nice looking SUV for 40,000 bucks. You really get just about everything you could possibly want or need. The only thing I wish this SUV had was uh, cooled seats, ventilated seats, because this black on black, black exterior, black interior can get really hot in Florida. But other than that, that's about it for the inside and outside of this 2023 Hyundai Palisade XRT. Let's take it out for a drive. All right, guys, now we've just about seen everything we need to see with the inside and outside of this all new 2023 Hyundai Palisade XRT. Let's take it out for a drive. And first thing I noticed, the steering feels nice. Hyundai steerings have been great lately, but this feels like very Genesis-esque, very luxurious feeling cabin belt. Fifth throttle, soft ride quality, good low end torque too, which is surprising with only 262 pound feet. Just comfort mode, barely slowing down, throw it in faster than we should. A little bit of body roll, but not bad on the gas. Okay, not bad. It pulls um, harder after about 3,500 to be expected with a dual overhead cam, variable valve timing, six cylinder, uh, but it gets there. Doesn't feel underpowered, but zero to 60 around seven seconds. It feels just like it, but anyway. One more time, barely on the gas. Good low end torque, you can pick up speed easily. Most of the vehicles nowadays are turbocharged, so you're used to that low end punch, but this, this motor has the low end punch and it also continues to pull up top, which a lot of the new turbocharged cars simply do not. But right here, it's such a quiet cabin. Bumps, very soft ride quality. Isolation from the road is excellent. But right here, we got some absolutely massive, massive bumps. Boom, this XRT handles them very well. This isn't like a true off-road vehicle. It's just like a more rugged Palisade, but it feels very planted through the big bumps. The small bumps, you barely even feel them. Right here, looks like a good spot to try out an acceleration off the line. All right, guys, off the line, sport mode, try to get a good launch. Let's go. Wow, traction control kicked in. 
Yeah, this is a powerful, powerful six cylinder. You can spin those wheels even with these 245 tires, and this is a pretty heavy 4,200 pound SUV. So there's definitely power. Handles the bumps incredibly well. Throwing it in, and with a great ride quality, the body roll is still surprisingly, surprisingly limited, guys. The brakes feel good. Everything is great about this car. So for $40,000, this is unbelievable. I previously used to believe that the Mazda CX-9 was like the king of three row SUV values, but no, this <laughs> Palisade for $40,000, you have just about everything you could possibly want or need. We could take a step out onto this multiple lane highway as soon as we get the chance, open up this Palisade for real one time, and I'll catch right back with you. All right, guys, on the highway at about 30 miles an hour on the gas, Ooh. Wow, yeah, this thing can pick up speed. So it does kind of fall on its face a little bit. In the lower RPMs, there's really not that much torque. The torque really picks up after about 4,000. But look at this, red light. Should be a good opportunity to try an acceleration off the line. We have to make the next left turn anyway. So it's not going to be much of an acceleration off the line. We can try out these manual shift controls. And I'll catch right back with you. All right, guys, off the line by half throttle. Yeah, the paddles don't really respond very quickly, so <laughs> I personally wouldn't be using them if I had a pal Palisade, but it's quick off the line, especially in sport mode. The throttle gets a lot more sensitive. I'd probably personally just leave it in comfort mode for daily driving. You don't need a throttle to be too sensitive. It's not like this car is all that fast anyway. Not quite sure what it's beeping at me for. Yeah, the steering wheel was just shaking. It was beeping at me, but I hope you saw on camera. I wasn't leaving my lane. I was well-centered in my lane. All right, one more time, comfort mode, about third throttle. quick use the manual shifts third gear yeah they're not rev match downshifts but a second gear pull on the gas not bad so uh yeah it's not gonna blow you away in terms of speed but it's more than quick enough it feels significantly quicker than like a volkswagen atlas with a 3.6 liter v6 that's probably this vehicle's main competitor outside of like the kia telluride or a celluride if that's what you want to call it because dealers can't keep those things on their lots for more than a day but anyway this car is also impressive it's basically sitting on the same platform as a telluride um we were in the manual shift mode that's why that thing just beeped at me so it's no longer in the manual shifts looks like we got some traffic over here good time to wrap up this video so overall this is an impressive car i'm really liking it obviously we've gotten the chance to review like the calligraphy on this channel and that vehicle was more luxurious than this no question but it had a base price of like 52,000 bucks with the all-wheel drive so for a front-wheel drive palisade i would personally prefer not going with the higher trims because uh for the higher trims you're paying a lot of money for 50,000 bucks i think there's nicer suvs on the road but for 40,000 bucks for this xrt i genuinely think this is the nicest three-row suv with the most space that you can possibly get for forty thousand dollars and that says a lot because the new Pathfinder is an impressive SUV. You can get a lower mid-trim Pathfinder for around 40,000 bucks. You can get a lower trim Mazda CX-9, Toyota Highlander, or even like a Dodge Durango that you see sitting over there for um, the $40,000 price range. But I personally think if you go for a $40,000 Highlander, $40,000 Durango, you're not gonna get the same quality of an interior as you would with a Palisade. Also the space. This is a spacious vehicle. If you're looking for a spacious family vehicle around the $40,000 price range, I would recommend going with the XRT or um, even the SEL because the SEL gets basically the same features that we have here in the XRT and it starts about $3,000 less. So overall, would I recommend going with the Palisade? Absolutely. I wouldn't necessarily recommend going with a top trim, a calligraphy over 50,000 bucks. Personally, I think there are nicer SUVs in the $50,000 price range, but for the $40,000 price range, as you mentioned, the XRT or SEL are fantastic luxury SUVs, but we'll get this thing parked right up and I'll catch back with you in one second. And huge thanks to Stefano and Eli here at Brandon Hyundai in Tampa, Florida for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below. These guys have an impressive dealership. And if you're looking for a new car in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out. And huge thanks to all you guys for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know I have endless gratitude 
for all the subscribers. The channel is just not possible without you guys, and I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars or trucks you want to see reviewed in this channel too. And I'll definitely try to get those videos for you as soon as possible. Other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope all of you have a great day.